Table 12 is brought to you by Favor. No app delivers more for Texas. Hi, I'm Lauren Bebo. On this episode of Table 12, we're at Cracklin Kings in downtown Beaumont, where you can get a taste of Creole cooking with German influences. Let's grab a seat at the table and see what they're serving up. Today we're here at Cracklin Kings in downtown Beaumont with owner Prentice Simeon. Prentice, this food looks delicious. Can you tell me what we're looking at? All right, the first dish over here to my left, it will be the um, seafood explosion. That's a baked potato mm -hmm. with a fried catfish filet, and it's topped with the shrimp and crawfish a toupee. That looks heavenly. Yep, it all goes together, trust me. The second dish that we have right here, this is our T-Rex, it's very popular here at the restaurant mm -hmm. and also on the food truck. That's um, macaroni, mm -hmm. and it's topped with brisket, boudin, and also pulled pork. And on top is barbecue sauce and our special king sauce and it's topped with green onions. And um, if you finish it here at the restaurant, then you get a free ice cream sandwich to further punish it. Wow, that is <laughs> quite a portion right yeah. there. And next, I'm familiar with this dish. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's the Creole shrimp pasta. Mm -hmm. um, it's made with the garlic butter cream sauce and um, it's seasoned to perfection. And it's one of our most popular items also at the restaurant and on the food truck as well. The last dish is um, our good friends locally, DJ's Buddha. Everybody loves DJ, so we always have it on the menu for you. I do love my boudin, and then we can't forget of the course. cracklins. Yep, these are our signature cracklins. This is what got me started. This is what's, you know, basically how I got the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, people love the cracklins. This is the regular cracklins here, and we also have the crackling candy. Um, it's like a sweet and salty snack. It's for people that like sweet and salty, mm -hmm. you know, snack items. Mm -hmm. um, they really love it. Yep. So these are some of the dishes here that we have at the restaurant. So you mentioned cracklins is how you got started. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, I started making, when I first moved back to America, I was living across the street from my uncle and um, he was making cracklings. Mm -hmm. And But cracklings have been in our family for a long, long, long time. Um, I remember when I was a little boy, they used to kill the hog and then, you know, butcher it and then make cracklings out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically, um, living across the street from my Uncle Mike, he was making cracklings one day and then every time he made cracklings, people just kept coming over and everybody was so happy. And so um, I was just like, man, Uncle, you want to teach me how to make them? Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, yeah, sure, buy the skins. And so I um, purchased the skins and, you know, started making them, experimenting with them. And it took me about a year and a half to, to, to really get it down. And then ever since then, it's just, you know, just something that I love to do. Um, I love what my mind is when I'm cooking crackling. It's free, you know, sort of like when I play basketball, my mind is free. And um, so I love it and people really enjoy it. And uh, here we are. Great. And you offer multiple flavors of these? Just two, my, just okay. my regular and, uh, and my crackling candy. And I can't tell you what's in my crackling candy because I invented that and it's a secret. And that's what makes him the crackling king. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first I'm gonna try the seafood explosion. Dig in. So that's why we call it a seafood explosion because, <laughs> you know, you uh -huh. got the crawfish, you got the shrimp, and you got the, the catfish. Mm, that's delicious. A really good dish for Lent that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love the ends of the catfish where it's crispy, so mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna go for. I heard that crunch. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. And I, I fry that, I fry my fish in, in my crackling grease. So it gives it a, a, a very, very, very good flavor. Very distinct flavor. Wow. This is so good. Next, I'm going to try this monstrosity over here. <laughs> and I'm going to start with, is this the brisket side? That's the brisket, okay, yes. Okay, I'm going to start with the brisket side because I love brisket. And be careful okay. because it's so tender it might cut you. So the T-Rex, that's the brisket, mm -hmm. that's the boudin, and also the pulled pork. Great flavor, great flavor. And the little spiciness that you taste is our king sauce. Um, so that gives king it a little bit of zest, yes. Very nice, that, that is also delicious. And you got that, you sell that on the food truck, you said? Yep, on the food truck, I got the brisket mac, the mm -hmm. pulled pork mac, boudin mac, or if you want all three, then mm -hmm. get the T-Rex. Um, I can taste the char on the brisket a little bit, and I love like texture and my meat. And I also love macaroni. And the king sauce gives it that little bite, like you said. Um, definitely a comfort dish right here. Kind of represents everything, you know, you've got going on here. Yeah, we got a lot of different dishes over here. You know, whatever your taste is, you know, with the gum, we have the gumbo, and of course we have the German dish. Uh, we have the schnitzel, mm -hmm. um, the real German schnitzel. And so, I mean, my menu, I mean, I, just, I put my menu up against anybody because we have such a variety of different kind of foods. So 
I think we have something available for anybody's uh, you know hunger during that day. Now I have to try, you know, what you're known for, which is your cracklins. And so how long does it take to make cracklins? In the pot, it takes between 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Um, every pot is different. It all mm. depends. It all depends on, you know, the hog. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you get a young hog, they'll cook a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get an older hog, which is a little bit more tough. So it takes a little bit more time to, um, you know, for it to cook. But normally, right now, 45 minutes on average to an hour, 15 minutes of stirring. Yeah. This is really good. Like you said, salty and sweet. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had cracklins, it's, it's a unique, kind of snack, right, would you say? Or maybe yeah. appetizer. And you sell them by the bag. So yes, people could just come in and take a bag and bring it home and snack on it. These are really good. And so what flavor is this? This, this is my signature cracklings. Uh -huh. I make my own seasoning. So mm -hmm. um, the flavor that you have on there is, and it's very, very low in salt. You know, that's one of the things that I stayed away as far as when I make my seasoning for it. Really? Yep. And every piece is kind of different. Mm -hmm. Like this piece is a little more, um, I don't want to say mushy, but you know, it's it's not as tough as the other pieces, but it's a good snack. I would definitely recommend trying it. Well, certain pieces, you know, mm -hmm. as y'all seen when I was cutting the crackling earlier, mm -hmm. you know, certain pieces come out different sizes and also yeah. it's like different different parts of the pig skin. Right. You know, so right. some, some pieces you'll have a little bit more fat, some mm -hmm. pieces you'll have skin on there. Mm -hmm. And last, I'm going to try my favorite dish, like I said, the shrimp creole pasta. Now, you, you find shrimp pasta a lot around Southeast Texas, but I really like yours because there's no shortage of flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, look at all the onions and the veggies that you have here. Well, it's a lot of different, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a lot of different uh, countries that's in that dish. Yeah. Um, of course, it's Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And then you got a little, you know, the pasta and like the, the sauce is made kind of a German way as well. Yeah. You know, so. It's a, it's, it's a lot going on in there, but everybody's really satisfied with it. Um, it's really good. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's just one of the favorites. You always get it every time you come over here. You know, I do. That, yeah, that and the schnitzel. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And we also have that on the food truck as well. And you keep the shell on the shrimp, which I think gives a little more flavor. That's what gives it flavor. Mm -hmm. And you know, every now and then, you know, people, they'll complain and say, hey, you should have the yeah. shrimp with no shells on it, yeah. but it's not gonna taste the same. Like right. when you cook that pasta, and you cook that shrimp and you keep the, shell, the shells on, mm -hmm. it just it just completely Ooh. gives it a different flavor. Yeah, uh, that was the splash right there. <laughs> I love the splash. That's yeah. how you know you got lots of juice. Mm -hmm. um, and so you keep mentioning Germany. Can you explain a little bit to the viewers why you keep bringing up German influences in your menu? Um, because I lived there. Um, mm -hmm. I was used to play professional basketball um, while I was there. Mm -hmm. And so I lived in Germany for almost seven years. And so I got accustomed to their dishes, their way of cooking, um, their way of living. And, you know, I just wanted to bring that back. And so you, my parents, they're from Louisiana and you already know how good the food is coming from the boot. So when you can mix that in, you know, it's really good. What a story, that's yeah. so awesome. So Prentice, what's it like having a restaurant downtown and a food truck that you take all over the Golden Triangle? Well, having a restaurant downtown is tough, mm -hmm. you know, cause downtown is, is steady under reconstruction. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the meeting last week and they have some good plans as far as what they're trying to do with downtown. Yeah. But a lot of people in Beaumont, they don't go downtown. Right. So my location, um, unless you go into the courthouse or mm -hmm. go pay your water bill, or if you're in trouble next door at the probation office, then yeah. you're not really driving through. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just been word of mouth, um, social media, mm -hmm. and just my long standing as far as just selling crackling in the community, you know, for the last eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And so, but the restaurant business is tough. Um, I can yeah. tell you that for anybody that's looking uh, to, to, to have a restaurant, um, you just have to learn how to deal with um, support. Yeah. Um, a lot of people support you with a like or, you mm -hmm. know, a comment that looks good, yummy, mm -hmm. this and that. But mm -hmm. the real support is them coming in and walking through that door. Definitely. So, you know, you just have to take it. Um, Mr. Bruce Arts, mm -hmm. um, I love running into him because he always gives me good sound advice and he's been in business for a long time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he helped me with, he was just like, what's a bad month? What's two bad months? What's two bad weeks? And so that really helped me out a lot as far as how to deal and handle um, the slow periods. And tell me about the food truck. Where can people find you and how often have you been going around town with that? We're in Port Arthur, mm -hmm. um, Coons. 
Um, we also go to Orange as well. And I just really wanted to say thank you to those three communities for sure, um, because they've been supporting me. And whenever I come out there, they support me. Like whenever the restaurant is really slow, I have to go out yeah. in the food truck. And yeah. um, Boma, y'all support me as well, don't get it twisted. Mm. But I wanna give a spe special shout out to Coons and Port Arthur and Orange because every time I show up, man, that community comes out and they're really nice. And I, and I really, really appreciate them very much so. And I'm sure they're really grateful to you as well for coming yeah. out there and, you know, the work it takes to, you know, make your delicious items. And in the smaller communities, they don't necessarily have all the options that we in Beaumont have. So I love that you do that. And I know that they do as well. Yeah. I just hope that um, everybody continues to support, you know, people that have food trucks. Um, you know, I started on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, I never forget I was on Lucas Street and um, the North End of Beaumont, they took care of me. I was mm -hmm. doing that for my AAU basketball team. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to raise money for, for kids who really didn't have it. Yeah. And so um, selling food on the side, you know, that's when I pretty much got my start is, mm -hmm. you know, after I learned how to do cracklings, I went into the food and um, starting off with a low bar trailer mm -hmm. uh, with my crackling pot on the back of it, a tent, tables and chairs and mm -hmm. a sign. You know, a lot of people don't know that, I mean, when you see a mom and pop open up a shop, like open up a restaurant, yeah. man, there has been years of work oh, yeah. in order to get to that point. Mm -hmm. The people that's been supporting you that have helped you take each step mm -hmm. from the street to the food truck, to the restaurant, you know, we need you to continue to support us. I mean, you know, it's tough, but you know, we just, we just keep pushing through. Yeah, well, yeah. we appreciate you sharing that with us. And I know we hope with Table 12 that we can, you know, shed a little bit more light on what it's like to be a restaurant owner in Southeast Texas mm -hmm. or food truck owner. You know, the struggle is real. After yeah. COVID, you know, things have changed. Things have gotten more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and that dine-in traffic is still necessary. Yes. And so, uh, well, we love the food that you're serving here. And we hope more people can make it downtown to try this or find your food truck. Yep. And does the menu change on the food truck? The menu pretty much stays the same. Okay. I mean, only time it changes is like when we do certain events, like we have okay. Mardi Gras coming up. So okay. we'll have a couple of items that, you know, that will reflect the event that we're doing. But for okay. the most part, um, we have the brisket sandwiches, pulled pork sandwiches, the Creole shrimp pasta, um, the loaded Mac, cracklings and boudin. You know, that's pretty much what we yeah. try to stay with right now. Fantastic. Yep. So Prentice, tell us, what are your plans for the future of Crackling Kings? Well, my plans for Crackling Kings is, they hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. It's just, I ended up opening up this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like my goal has always been to get my Cracklings in every store in America. Yes. And since I opened the restaurant, I've gotten further and further and further away. Mm -hmm. So in the next coming up months, we're gonna do like just some readjusting as far as our hours of operation. And also so I can get back to getting that, you know, what my actual goal was, yeah. you know? So just going forward, we're just gonna kind of change it up a little bit over here. We're gonna change the hours up. Um, we're gonna start doing special events and we're gonna lean into more of the catering side. Okay. You know, we, have a, we cater already, but we wanna really push that going forward. Yeah, most definitely. I know the first time I met you, you mentioned wanting to have your cracklings in every store in America, and I just love that optimism. And like, I have no doubt that you will get there. Your flavors are great. Um, you know, there's a time and a place and those things will meet for you. I have no yeah. doubt. And people always ask me, you know, I always tell them I have the second best cracklings in the world and they always ask, well, who's the first? And I just say somebody, <laughs> uncle or grandpa, but we number two for sure. You know, I'll give, I'll give the crown up to somebody else as far as number one, mm -hmm. but we definitely number two. So with this rebranding, one of the things people will be able to do is rent out the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So about how many people can fit in here if you wanted to rent it out for a party? About 40 to 50. Okay. Um, 35, you know, would be a good target number, but mm -hmm. we can get 45 to 50 people in here. Okay. Um, we've been doing birthday parties and retirement parties so far already. Um, but if like, like businesses want to come in and have their Christmas party or, you know, anything where they just want a private setting and yeah. we can come in and we can, you know, tailor the menu to whatever you would like. And um, we got plenty of parking outside. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely safe with the police headquarters across the street. Yes. So you don't have to worry about anything as far as that. And, um, you know, we have music. Um, so just come on in and, you know, the restaurant, hey, it's nice. Um, I wanted it to be nice so people can use it, the community can use it. 
So the environment of Cracklin Kings, you know, it's pretty casual. Uh, people that work downtown can come in their office clothes or they can come in their casual clothes. While I was here, you had some people from Minnesota mm -hmm. who found you online, who came here and got to try Boudin for the first time. So, and everyone was very friendly. So tell us, you know, about your staff here. Well, my staff here and my customers, my motto is make yourself at home whenever you come to Cracklin Kings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat you like I've been knowing you 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're upset when you come in, hopefully I'm going to change that and make you happy walking out. Um, you don't have to come here just to eat. If you just want to get away from it all, you can come sit on the couch or come in and do some work. Just like when you come in with your computer and you, yeah. uh, you know, hook up to the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. It's cool. You know, staff, it's just chill. It's just friendly over here. Like, we just keep it 100 over here. You're at home. Just like you at the dinner table at the house over here. You know, and yeah. I like my customers, they interact with each other um, and they just, you know, they get good connections here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very chill, but like, you know, you have super high standards. It's very clean in here. And so, you know, come as you are and yeah. just enjoy the food and talk with Prentice and he'll inspire you to be a better person. <laughs> yeah, we play dominoes in here, chess, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, Pac-Man, I got the high score, so you're not getting that. And if you, <laughs> and whenever you get close, just let me know and I'll check the electrical breaker to make sure everything is good with that. <laughs> yeah, you just come in and, you know, just make yourself at home. It's, it's good over here, trust me. So how can people find you? You can find us on our Facebook page or you can call, um, you go to our website mm -hmm. and you can check us out there. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also call here and we'll let you know exactly where the food truck is going to be. Well, well, thank you so much for your time today, Prentice. Alrighty, thank and you. And more people need to come try this delicious food. Tune in next time to Table 12. Brought to you by Favor. No app delivers more for Texas.